Well, welcome everybody to <coughs> Personal Histories, an interview. This is actually our eighth interview that we've had together. Uh, and uh, the idea of doing this is a chance for members of the society to have a more personal contact with the histories of, uh, of some of our leaders and interesting people in the society, um, to hear stories that inspire and lessons often that we learn from their lives and often wisdom that's clean. And it's an opportunity to really, uh, in other settings, we can't really go up to someone and, tell, and say, tell me your life, <coughs> you know, I want to hear all about it. This is a chance to really take time and, and hear about uh, sequences of people's life, not just the professional life, but their actual personal life. So I'm just absolutely delighted to have Lisa McInerney here. Uh, and I've uh, been doing some homework, and it's been a very interesting year preparing. I want to uh, recognize a couple of people especially, and uh, one, of course, is Carol Berger, who is with us here today, who has worked in the office with Lissa for over 30 years, and I'm just delighted, Carol, that you're here. And I also want to thank Rich Kripe, who gave me some Where's really good information. And very <laughs> Where's Rich? <laughs> helpful. Where's to, the stare, Rich? So it, was, it was very good. Uh, so the sequence is that we'll kind of go through uh, her <coughs> whole history, her ancestry, and up through her life. And then at the end, we'll leave some time for people to be able to respond and ask questions and comments. So that's the structure of our time together. Uh, Lisa has really spent all of her life actively in New York State. Uh, she was born at Lenox uh, Hill uh, Hospital in New York City <coughs> and has uh, spent uh, much of her life then after that uh, in upstate New York uh, in Watson's Glen, which is the paternal uh, part of her family, and we are very interested to hear about that and then in Syracuse for training, and then in Rochester for some time. So she's a real New Yorker to the core. And so I want to start, though, Lissa, with um, having a comment on your ancestry and uh, history of your family. Uh, thanks, Dick, and this is such an honor. I told Dick that what a surprise and an honor to see so many of you, and my absence has been not absence spiritually, but absence physically because I wanted to make sure that adolescent medicine, once I stepped out of that role, thrived in my absence. I think it's important for individuation of programs and individuals. And as you know, Rich Kripe has done a spectacular job and will come further to that. Uh, so thank you for including me. It's wonderful to see all of you. And to also recognize Dick for the love and effort that he's put into this effort that will allow us to continue the family environment in our society and uh, particularly as I look out and see Iris and Dick and, and Dale and the group who were, grew up with me in the early days, to know there's that continuity to all of you. And as I've talked to the young people, I've really been refreshed by your quality and your commitment, which is very similar to the people who started this. So to get to the core, I'd like to start by talking about family as yeah. a strong theme throughout our whole lives, all of us. Mm -hmm. I'd like to talk uh, about our family in Watkins Glen in New York City. Our mother was from New York City, bless her soul. Uh, however, lived out her 99 years in Watkins Glen. She was a city woman who came to the country and the country took good care of her. <laughs> um, and it's happy that we had this effort and opportunity. Um, however, I'd like to talk also, as we put us all in context, this whole piece, about women in medicine because there are many good men who have supported us. But I want to make sure our young people know that there is a history there and a warm and wonderful history there. And then the last thing, I'm going to put this in the ecology of the generation that we grew up in because Dick and, and Dale and Dick and Iris and all of us did grow up in a unique, and Edie, and Carol, in a unique generation. There are probably others of you there, Ben, and some of the rest of you whom I'm just meeting. Um, that was World War II, post-World War II. So the first real remembrance that I had of our family home, about which I'm going to tell you, 
was being on the front porch with chaos in Watkins Glen that is a community of 2,500, nestled in upstate New York, which is God's country. I'll tell you more about it. Now, God did a very good job, and uh, we're very proud of her for her <laughs> choosing this. Oh, I'm proud of him. To, we chose this idyllic area, and that is part of the Proustian experience that I have regularly as I think about our memories there. Um, however, World War II was a time for those of you who don't remember it or haven't read about it, it was a time of great national purpose. And it was a time when the country was united against an aggressor and were committed that something, somebody, some spirit, all of them would overcome this. But it also meant that we didn't have a lot of goods. We had rationing, and I remember, for example, going to the market basket with our mother and sitting in the shelves where the goods were supposed to be because they hadn't gotten the shipment of whatever because the tin wasn't there, the rubber wasn't there for the, for the tires to get the food into upstate New York. Gasoline was rationed. So for example, our family had a summer home and we'd only see our Aunt Boo Boo uh, every week, even though she'd like to have been there all the time because she couldn't get somebody to give her some gasoline to get down 12 miles down the route. So we came from a generation that is now called the greatest generation. I'm not sure, I, that, that number I don't care for because I think you're all great. And each generation has its greatness. But it did set the stage for our values. And I'm gonna come back to values. And the values of family, because remember fathers were off to war the way they are now. Many families lost young people and the community still celebrates them. They haven't forgotten them. And the community often brought up the children with the mother or grandmother and so there's a uniting that I don't know that we've really felt in this country since that war. And these new wars somehow have been very, very different. We're all suffering, I think, in that context. So having said that, now what about Watkins Glen? Um, our genes are 100% bless our ancestors for good or for bad, Irish. <laughs> Every bone in the body is Irish. Now. That could be good, depends upon what you think about the Irish. It could be really bad, depending upon what their vulnerabilities are. But it is what it is. And into this Irish family were born three children at the Lenox Hill Hospital because our family had migrated back to upstate New York, and I'll tell you about that. The origins were our grandfather came from Boston to Rochester, New York, which is now where I feel very blessed to have been for the last 38 years. Our grandfather had an opportunity to join his sister and his family in a business in Watkins Glen. And this dashing, by the way my father told it, dashing young man goes to Watkins Glen and meets a local girl, marries her. Her uh, name was Marie Maloney. And they settled in a home in 1890 that my sister and I just renovated uh, as our summer home. And the rest was our father grew up there, loved his family and went to New York City to Columbia University as an undergraduate because his dad wanted him to get out of the country for a while to learn city ways. Well, he met somebody in New York City who was our mother, and after some a time in Westchester County, they returned to Watkins Glen because after having lived in Scarsdale for several years, they felt the values were not what they wanted for their family. So back to the country they went with our mother who had never been outside the metropolitan area other than some visits upstate New York into the snow, which at the time she described the snow was over the car, going from Ithaca from the train into this tiny town. And so she went and met the family who was in our father's father. Our family was in oil business, coal, oil, wood business. And uh, everybody knew everybody. And she couldn't get over that. They walked in the house, they didn't <laughs> knock. They knew what was going on. They knew what she was doing, what she was about to do. But it was a wonderful adjustment in many ways because it did set the stage for where we are and where we still go with great fondness. Now, within the fabric of what I can find out, I never knew any of my grandparents. They were older. Irish people tend to marry older, or they don't marry at all. That's the part of the rest of the story. And so I went and visited people in their 80s who had known our family to get the living history, because I didn't want to have a soul history from our family, who have a little bias, you know, about who these characters were. And I found that our grandfather, McInerney, was a man of the community. I knew that. You know, you can be head of the Chamber of Commerce, head of the Rotary Mayor, the head of the bank, and have a good life in a small town, because there are not a lot of people to do these jobs. So our grandfather was an altruistic, community-minded gentleman. They de described him as a gentleman. I don't know what that meant exactly. 
But he was, he liked to travel. He knew that education, he had to get his children somehow out into the world to learn. And from that came a, the, the ecology of my father's life was that of service, uh, head of Rotary, head of the Chamber of Commerce, head of whatever active community, and then came an experience that changed all of our lives called four on the floor or three on the tree. That was the Watkins Glen Grand Prix that came to town in 1946, post-World War II, when we had first, one of the first races for international races in the country, and my father was on the board of directors, and their lives, I mean, it was incredible. It really changed.